It's the Impala Rugby Club in the wonderful area of Rustenburg in South Africa. And it's time for the SSG Gold Cup final. A very special occasion for club rugby. They've had six weeks. It's all been squeezed into six weeks of playing for this competition on a knockout basis. And the two top teams this season, Nurek Impala and Durba, will contest this final in, as you have a look up there, glorious weather. There's the confirmation of the weather forecast. And it is quite warm, one's got to say. And in fact, almost a little Durbanish at times because uh, a lot of people sweating out there. There's no wind to speak of. It's a heavy field, uh, as I've said before, but uh, well grassed. And that's the, the Durbel team then. And uh, they lost just one match in the run-up to the Rhinos by four points. But other than that, they were victorious. There's 992 caps in that team. So this is a team that has played together for some time. And number eight, Carl Liebenberg, played his 100th game last up. And uh, it was a special occasion for him with a jersey with a 100 on the back and his son, Lucas, that came onto the field with him. And, of course, he scored the first two tries of that match, too, just to add to it. This is a very experienced team. It's also a quality team, as we've seen from the results. They've absolutely swept the opposition aside in the lead-up to this final. And it is a team that also boasts some very experienced players. Justin Wheeler, the blindside flanker, has played Super Rugby, for example. Shonai Willemse has played for Borland. It's worth over a million rand, that trophy. And uh, it is a, quite a beautiful trophy. Of course, we're in mining area, so gold maybe is a little bit cheaper up here. Who knows? <laughs> those are the replacements. And uh, there are some names, too, that certainly you, those rugby lovers, would uh, take care of. Justin St. Jerry, definitely one of them. And, uh, of course, Erasmus van der Linde as well, who's called uh, Janras. So some big boys there. And a hot day today. They will certainly play their part. So we wait for the teams to come out and I'll tell you what, there's just uh, so many people here. It's been a day of festivities and, you know, club rugby in South Africa, Vim Fissa alongside me, having played uh, 40 internationals for, I for, I nearly said Ireland, for Italy. Um, club rugby looks to be alive and well when we arrived here today. Almost definitely so. The atmosphere is absolutely amazing. This club is brimming, there's passion, but club rugby was the heart before the professional area where guys put their hand up, they got chosen for their provinces, from there they became Springboks. But at the end of the day, we need to realize this is rugby of the working class hero. These are guys that work from eight to five every single day, go and train with their club in the evening. A lot of the new rack players are learning apprenticeships, at part of new rack. But at the end of the day, they form a brotherhood. Like you said, there's 992 caps in that Durbel side. They've been together for a long time. They're brothers. They play for each other. It's families. Families get together. It's a fantastic occasion. And it's a chance to get your name in the history books, winning the championship this year. Well, it's the third time that the final's being hosted here at Rustenburg Impala. Hanno Stoffberg will captain the uh, Durbel side saw him in picture the team's lining up at the moment which will be for the national anthem shortly and justin wheeler will be captaining the rustenburg impala team okay we're just going to ask everybody to stand up as we're going to sing the national anthem
stirring stuff here at Rustenburg Impala, Impala Rugby Club in Rustenburg. And the Durbel guys uh, just making sure that uh, they've got the final word there too. And Rustenburg Impala, I, I guess from at the end of the day, as we have a look at the match officials there, Stefan Geldenhuis will be refereeing this game. And uh, Johan Kreef is our TMO, along with uh, Christopher Allison and uh, Mapo Winsung. I suppose at the start of a game, and rugby is unpredictable, the Impalas probably start this game as favourites. A little bit so, yes, definitely. They're playing at home, they're in front of a packed stadium. They unbeaten, their record speaks for themselves. But at the end of the day, that's the, that's history. It's all about today. It's all about who is more hungry, who wants this title more. It's all going to begin up front. Both sides have massive packs. And Paul, a 590 kilogram type five. Durbal, a 601 kilogram type five. Those are two big packs for amateur rugby. So Sia Masuka with the kickoff yard. Yeah. He's been one of the top players in this team during the course of the season. The fly off accumulated 70 points to date, and it's an early scrum opportunity here for Durbel. I see uh, our Afrikaans commentator Tux van Alinda alongside me licking his chops when he hears about a scrum. Oh, don't we all in the tight five that engine room? We lick our chops first scrum of the game. This is where titles are won up front. Yep. So Dion Tiart has got the put in then for Durbel. Got a bit of a blind side to work with too. If he can do something with his number eight, Paul Liebenberg. But they've decided to come open side then to Gunter. I think you're going to see a lot of running rugby today until the players get too tired. Ah, penalty for the ball being held on at the deck. Oh, Nico Kruger doing outstanding work on the ground for his side. The scrum half getting physical immediately. A product of Monas. Played some Lions Vodacom Cup in 2012, and he's a sales rep. Well, the man who's just kicked the ball is an engineer. The uh, fly half, and there you saw was almost what was could have been called a high tackle. Perfectly positioned in a position of strength, wins that penalty. And the man that kicked the ball, he engineered that to perfection. Previously played for the Lions as well, did Simaduka. Good strong catch there by Tion Nell for the Impala. And they've got men lined up in the back line here, and some big guns to carry it too. Maduka quickly through the hands. Trying to get it to his trio of loose forwards who were standing off too. Now the long pass from him. Oh, that was good pressure at the breakdown point there from the host team. So they've won another penalty. Samasuku has the opportunity of a, a kick at goal here early in the match. And it's the second penalty that the Im Impala team have won. Well, it's immediate pressure from this Impala side. They mean business. Clearly not rolling away at the breakdown point. You do get trapped in no man's land, but you need to make that effort, conscious effort in front of the referee. Well, there's no wind to speak of, really on this uh, stadium here in Rustenburg. Very circumspect. A neat strike, and it's a three-pointer. The 22-year-old Masuku, an uh, excellent start for the fly half. He's an electrical engineer, and... He takes his tally to 73 points in this Gold Cup campaign. He's the leading point scorer, and he is one of the nominees for the player of the year, amateur player of the year. That's uh, worth discussing too. Of course, there are four players in each side here who have been selected by the respective coaches as the potential club player of the year. 
And that's left to us commentary team here of uh, Isit Krosa and uh, Afrikaans and English to actually choose that person, the club player of the year. And of course, we'll have the usual man of the match too in this game. Impala starting to get some decent advantage. ball now. And I tell you, the crowd are getting rather loud. Against Red Yard, okay, so play advantage. Back, please. Andre Sulafir in the <laughs> picture there. He's a big boy to push around. Be a little bit careful with him. This is what you call clinical ball, eye on the ball, two hand kickoff take. So many occasions in South African rugby, you score points and immediately concede possession from that phase. It is a contestable phase. Outstanding work by the Impala team. The tackle was high, we remained grabbing him around the neck, so it's a yellow card. Wow, well, the noise I was talking about has just climbed a few decibels as Craig Walker is given a yellow card. And of course, he's from the Durbanville team. That's not going to do them any good at all. It's another kick there from Masuku. Directing the traffic. That's the take. Kick take. A clear round the neck, wrapping around. Zero tolerance demonstrated from the referee Stefan Gelnes. Throwing from Nico Paper. It's good delivery of that. Right up onto the advantage line. Players running at pace too. This is a team that's played together for a long time too. They know each other. They've had a, a terrific season of the six weeks that we've had. The SSG Gold Cup. Advantage. A little knock on there from Impala. Standing off is Yanko Gunter with the long well. pass, so they want to move this ball around. They're desperately close to their 22. They've got to make sure that they control the ball on the ground when they've got the possession. Tackle. So Vian Fribino, who's playing on the left wing today for Belleville, he's 1.96 meters. He could play in the lock position. That's excellent play once again from Masuku. A little tough kick over the top from Nico Krier. But the race is won by Dion Tiar. So I guess Durbanville, or Durbel as we'll call them in the match, would really like to get out of their half of the field. We'll see a long drop kick here from Dion Tiart. Back it goes to the points machine, Masuku. Fielded by Raymond Ulufi, one of the very experienced players in this Durbel side. playing in any game of rugby especially a final you need to be in the right areas of the field and it's all been impala at the moment they're in the right areas their execution is good their line out position is good and walker's got a yellow card so they're playing in 14 at the moment so durbel under a bit of pressure at the moment yeah but they're not getting their hands on enough ball either so it's all about defense at the moment lovely little inside pass the big charge downfield this is excellent play and is a real chance here now for Andre Grobler. Not able to find a weave his way through. That might have been very close to a forward pass. Nevertheless, the play continues. Still they come. That's going to be a try, surely. It had to come eventually. When you're playing with 14 men, you're always under pressure. Outstanding work from this Impala side. They mean business. They win the line out and immediately that inside ball there made the difference. Masuka started guns blazing. Then they keep the ball alive, offload in the tackle. Outstanding work from this 
in Paula's side. Patience has demonstrated. Recycle ball is good. So easy. Silky touches in front of heavy traffic by McDonald Duma. Thank you. Well, perhaps he couldn't ask for a, a tougher conversion from the right hand touchline. He's literally on the touchline almost. Very direct approach to the ball. And is, uh, he was perhaps hoping it would fade in a little bit, but it certainly is first bloody. Wasn't that also a super run on the inside from Utuma Pete, the left winger? The two of them in tandem with his fly half. Don't often see a, a scrum half kicking off. Kick off comes from Nico, uh, rather from Dion Tiart. And Impala haven't really been in their 22, so they haven't been placed under pressure as of yet. So now the long passes, and again, they show their intention to run with the ball. Do the Rustenberg Impala. This time the ball lost now and a chance here for Durbel. They really need to hold on to the ball for a while. Put some pressure on Impala if they can. No, 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 no. No. That ball's not out yet, so but the counter ruck is good, surely. Still advantage. No, referee's not happy. Played a knock on. Playing some good advantage. The referee Stefan Geldenhuis from the knock-on, losing the ball in contact as Sia Masuku. And afterwards stepping well off his left, but there he loses the ball. But look how frustrated he is with himself. It means so much to the man. So we need a, a change in the scrum now because obviously of the yellow card. In interesting that Durbel are taking off Charles Janssen, they lock forward. And they've uh, brought on Van Staden. Well, they have moved Daniel Buertis into the lock position. He's also a big man at loose forward, 1 meter 94, 115 Five. kilograms. Six. Play on. Well, oh, Durbel under a lot of pressure there, but have they managed to they hold on to that ball? Up from Tiat, direct line for Olafi. And he's managed to keep it in field. That's good work from him. There's Ashley Kola. Oh, Paul Boy's high schoolboy and star, in fact, at the time. Quickly from Tiat. Gunter. Now they put a bit of pressure on you. This is great ball. Is there support? Is there close enough support? It could be a try. It is a try to Tian Rabin. Former Bullant Lantpo and Lions and Cavaliers player Tian Rabin gets in for the first points for Durbel. Tian Rabin, the sales and marketing executive. Settles the nerve for the co coaching staff, but it's good execution. Defensive pattern of the Impala, allowing space out wide. The, they let the ball do the work. That there made the difference, getting his hands through the tackle. And then recycling inside. Look at the smile on the man's face. He's thrilled. Nerves are settled for this Durbel side. That was the pressure I was talking about, you know, the pressure that Durbanville really needed to apply on Impala and they did that really well there with Etienne Schwartz getting his arms through that tackle too. Raymond Olafier, 60 points in fourth position this season in the six weeks of club rugby. 
And he's going to add another two, is he? I think he is. Yep. Considering the fact that Durbel are on 14, and they managed to score a try from a set piece that wasn't very good. Okay. And a lot of pressure. Showed a lot of courage to come back in this. Because Impala have been all over them in this first 11 minutes. I think they'll give a lot of credit to their scrum off, Dion Tiart. They call him Opuet. For he was under huge pressure on various times. Now that kick's gone directly into touch from Masuka. So they'll come back to the halfway line for a scrum. And really is quite disruptive when you, of course, lose a, a tight forward. Craig Walker, the tight head prop forward in uh, the Durbel side. And uh, the man on the field is uh, Andre van Staden, of course, taking his place temporarily. Uh, hold on. 112 kilograms. That's enough to add a little bit of weight to the scrum. Crouch. Bind. Set. The man at the back of that Durbel scrum, Carl Liebenberg, is a very explosive rugby player. Really big kick. guy and hails from Oatsorn. He hasn't really been able to get anything on the front foot up until now. Crouch. So how does Dion Tiart play this one? Fine. Midfield scrummage. Options on the side. Well, they needed a quick delivery, and they've actually eventually got it. Back in field it comes there to Edwin Schwartz, but a little knock on. Just saw what they were trying to do there. The intention was really very good. Drifting wide, that inside ball was an option. I actually think it was a very good option watching that slow-mo. Oh, definitely so. If that had gone to hand, alarm bells for the Impala side because that flanker needed to be drifting inside Crouch. and covering the inside of the defensive line. Bind. Set. Nico Krier with uh, the scrum off duties. Yes, boys, yes, boys. Close bit from Vake and McDonald Duma starting to get involved. That's a huge tackle. Wow. Ricardo really enjoying the physicality of uh, this contest. You can see the willingness of both teams to really. When I say enter into the spirit, the spirit of rugby, but they've obviously got a trophy to win too. Yeah, play on. However, where's the susceptibility of these two teams? Is it out wide? Is there opportunities to run at the opposition? As we see here from Roman Ulafiel. Support play coming in too, but not enough close in support. Still they come. This is a team playing with 14 men. Strong running there from Yanko Gunter. And suddenly, this game has come alive because they're getting a little bit more possession now, Durbel. They're showing their rare qualities. TR, yeah. there's a knock on. It's going to be a penalty, so good pressure that from the visitors. I say the visitors because. Uh, Durbanville Belleville down in the, the Western Cape. Six blue. High tackle. High tackle there coming from Shane Willemse. In fact, uh, that man and uh, his fellow loose forwards have scored virtually all the tries this season for Impala, which says a lot as well in terms of their abilities to move the ball around to. The loose forward trio of this Impala side have scored a total of 17 tries. And all three of them are also nominated for the SA Player Amateur Player of the Year Award. They've been outstanding, but not rolling away at the breakdown is McDonald Duma. And it seems to be that Durbel have settled the nerves. They're getting a bit more possession. They're playing in the right areas. They're very direct. They're very physical.
Well, we saw that last kick just curl a little bit from left to right from Raymond Ulafir. This one again also is uh, an acute angle from the other side. And David, a good thump, and he's got another three points. Well, they are back to 15 men too, so they'll be pleased about that. And they're pleased with the fact that they've been getting their hands on some ball. Now it's time for Impala to make sure that they get a good start here and don't kick it out directly into touch. Thank you. That's a much better kick in and give pressure to forcing Dodo to carry it out. That time it was uh, Daniel Burtis. A civil engineer. It's lovely looking through these players and seeing the occupations of them. You know, there's piles of uh, electricians and accountants and lawyers and all sorts of things here. Something we don't see in the professional era, of course. And that's pretty good ball. As we asked Durbanville, Belleville to hold on to the ball for a while, I think Impala want to do the same. Show some patience. If they can't break through, just keep it moving. Oh, it's been turned over. So, very good counter ruck that from Durbel. And now it's back on the side of Impala and working the blind side. Masuku might have thought about a pass there. It seemed to be an, an option out wide. It's now for the, the big guns to carry it. Justin Wheeler, the captain, very much part of the mix. I lost it now. I guess, Ben, one of the other questions that I would have, because these are not professional athletes, How's their stamina? And obviously the replacement bench will be important during this game, given the fact that it's very warm here as well. Raymond Ulafir, not too much he could do there. I think that ball might have been thrown into touch. No. Held on on the deck, says uh, Stefan Geldenhuis. Number six, first man in. Heno Stoffwerf that uh, he was talking to there. But, uh, the left winger there, Leon Gribeno. Also under a lot of pressure. Bring the tactics of the St. Paula side. A lovely grubber. And the kick chases to perfection. And then well contested on the ground. Unfortunately, not enough numbers and cleaners for the Durbel side. Opportunities, opportunities. Form Paula. Former SA Schools player, Nico Paper, with the throw in. Actually, a neat, neat catch there, too, for Leon Duplessis, who's the man in possession right now. He, twice before, he's been the South African Club Player of the Year. And then not. Seven was fine. Well, that ball was uh, fairly won, says the referee, but the knock on was unfortunately from uh, Daniel Boertis means that it's a very good attacking opportunity this for Impala once again it's prominent Leon Duplessis he's a good carrier he's a big eighth man at 112 kilograms very physical he scored six tries this year there's a lovely blind side Durbel defending with two defenders in that channel Crouch. solid scrum needed Bind. Now there's question time here for Nico Krier. Can he get support from Leon Duplessis number eight here? Nine. Can it be a classic Set. eight nine fourteen try on the blind side? Will Duplessis pick it up? No, they're gonna look to try and shove. The Durbel team Advantage. back, and they've done well up until now. It's a penalty for them. One standing up. 
Penalty goes against Ashley Kohler for standing up in the scrum. And I guess for him as well, it's very important that Durbel don't give away a yellow card again. Yeah, if they don't absorb the pressure, that could well happen. Well, that's the first thing. And Paul have opted for another scrum. They're ready on a scrum penalty. It could be more drastic, like a penalty try. If they infringe on a few occasions, but it's a good scrum, solid from Impala. But stepping up out of the contest is the loose head. Bind. Ashley Kola. Set. Oh, Ashley Kola has said on his resume that he would love to be a fly half. <laughs> He's a loose head prop, but he'd love to be a fly half. You actually took the words out of our mouth. One of his rugby goals is to be a fly half. And somebody else is also a front rower who wants to convert his own drive. Couch. And there was another front rower who wants to maintain a 100% kicking success Set. rate. Well, that's yes, gone straight down. Riffy says the ball's available, so they'll take it. Basuku. And the quick pass, that's slight of hand. That's really good play from Impala. And it might be down. We'll have to wait in here. The assistant referee had his hand down. He was quite comfortable that the try had been scored and he wasn't into touching goal. Now it's standing play from the Sampala side. They well drilled. Letting the ball do the work. Quick recycle ball. That makes the difference. Mapete gets his name on the board. Good first time tackle by Durbel, but that recycle from the ground kept the ball alive, kept forward momentum, and then outstanding play. Still with quite a bit of work to do. He was comfortably in, wasn't he? That's the same man that took that inside pass and did a bit of work. So on the other side of the field, so good to see wing wingers actually making sure that they remain part of the game. And I'll tell you what, I think uh, Sia Masuku must be asking what he's done wrong, that he's been given <laughs> two conversions right on the touchline. <laughs> he's got the distance, but not the direction. Still, in volley into the lead, and it's anyone's game at the moment, certainly, as we move uh, towards the Last third then of the first half. Interesting thing about Leon Duplessis, the number eight for Impala, and we were talking about him just now, he retires today. This is his last rugby match. So uh, he really would want it to be a, a victorious one, I'm sure. And he's given yeoman service, has Duplessis, over the years. Kick downfield for Finn is a huge kick that with very little room to move in. Well, the energies are up. It's a final, of course. It's a, a one off. It's 80 minutes worth. Everybody giving everything they've got. Territory and possession all in favor and Paula. Turbo is slowly getting a little bit more possession as this game progresses. Yazul Afir. Support coming from Etienne Schwartz. Tackle, tackle! Tackle complete. No, that's number eight. Penalty against the man we were talking about, Leon Duplessis. A couple of soft penalties that the Impala side have conceded, especially in kickable areas for this Durbel side. And what it's done is it's just kept their scoreboard ticking over, keeping their confidence up. They're still in this game. The attacker is called. You need to allow the attacking player to place that ball. So it's the tackle assist. Just looking through the list of occupations here. Many, of course, from the mining industry and the team of 
Impala, electricians, engineers, brokers, farmers, accountants on the other side. What a wonderful mix. Raymond Dulop here. One successful penalty to date. And that's not going to make it. What a lovely picture. Paula Rosenberg Club full of people, support. It's a Sunday. It's festive. There's children, there's families. Club rugby's healthy in South Africa, Gavin. Yeah, it's wonderful to see, you know. I often cite the example of the New Zealanders who say without club rugby, they'd be dead. And it's really important to have that pipeline. And I think with the current moves, potential moves that we hear, of in the future i think there's going to be a lot more scope for school board a lot more personnel available to them too for players to build on and, you know spare thought for the coaches too of of these clubs you know just chatting to nico um, larue the coach of impala who spent a time in in new zealand as well learned a lot there he said coaching wise they also give up a lot the suku's kick and remember it's quite a heavy field so that ball gets held up and it's gone into touch in goal, so they're going to come a very long way back. Uh, unforced error from Masuku, gifting possession back to this Durbal side. And remember, the scrum will take place from where the ball was kicked. So once again, an attacking opportunity for Durbal. There's a lovely blind side area available. I can tell you, it looks like that the Impala side are only defending with one man in that channel, so a good tight head lean. Crouch. And 8, 9, 15 or 14 Fine. could work for the side. Sit. Now it's a good solid scrum from Durbel. Looking to bring their backs into play. Tion Rodane was one of them. Tackle. They certainly are getting a lot more ball as this half progresses. And in addition, making a nuisance of themselves. Missed that. I imagine there's a, a terrific com camaraderie that's developed as well with players who've played together for such a long time. Many of these players have been with their club for more than five years. Back in field goes Ashley Kohler. Up to six phases at the moment, and possession is one thing, but holding on to the ball is the other. Durbel are doing really well here, carrying this through the phases. Can they find a hole somewhere along the line? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he's such yeah, a big guy on the left wing. The tackle there by two men. Uh, Hribano is a massive man for a winger. 1 meter 94, 115 kilograms. I wonder if that's right. It's 100% correct. And he's uh, actually an electrician by trade. And uh, applied his trade in Scotland too. He played some rugby in Scotland. He's a really big boy. So good to see uh, people coming out for to watch schools rugby you know and it's also they make a day of it you know that's the one good thing we've been to the rustenberg impala club in the past and early in the morning the brys are starting they've got stalls they've got all sorts of things happening and it is a happening for the town in many ways and they're so much part of it and singing and carrying on and it's wonderful to have that sort of atmosphere as a player isn't it oh definitely so it's a family occasion you saw the little kids dancing having fun you know on the on the B field there, it's full of cars, but you see kids playing with a rugby ball. It's it's amazing stuff, and it's it's healthy. It's good for our club rugby. And of course, the coverage here yeah, for you know many of these players too. They don't enjoy regular coverage on television that their families can enjoy, their friends too, and other club rugby players in South Africa. This is the aspiration to get to the finals. 100%. And 
We couldn't Five. do this without sponsors. SSG Six. prominent Six. in sponsoring this event. Yep, along with Blue Approved and Info Jam. You picked that up. So is it Impala's turn now to carry that ball around a little bit and place pressure on Durbanville? Backwards off Blue, play on. Daniel Buertis. Good presentation of the ball for Dion Tiar. But he has the counter attack, so that's even more pressure there. Quickly from Olafir. Now the kick coming from Tian Radain. And a chance here for a counter attack. Solani, Kalani, and Kozi, who has hardly been in the game. And well, referee says a forward pass. There's the fullback. Hasn't really been a, an opportunity for him as yet. Twenty-six year old, from born in Pretoria. Product of Hendrik Vervutha. That pass there was forward. I he, think the call came from the assistant referee with that one. Ah, oh, definitely so. And Solani and Corsi, he's a new rack learner boiler maker. Yeah, wonderful too that new rack the sponsors. Of Rustenburg in Parlor too, and there's so Kirk. many job opportunities here too for these young men Mind. in the mining Set. industry, and they can ply their trade with their love as well and their love of rugby. Tiat. Tackle. Three flat ball on that occasion for Johan Conradi. Release now. Winter and eventually Etienne Schwartz just tried, I think, to <laughs> catch and pass at the same time. Oh, it almost looked like a open and shut case of taking your eyes off the ball and looking at an approach, approaching defensive line. There, but going back to New Rack and the employment opportunities that's been created for youngsters. They haven't been part of the professional era, but they're creating opportunities for the future, for future positions in a company, Count. and that's amazing. I salute that kind of Fine. that attitude and the love of rugby Set. and these kids creating futures for themselves. And also for all those young kids you're talking about as well, there's an aspiration for them too around this field today. McDonald Duma is in the center position as well for Impala, also an impressive man. Here he is in picture. And then Masuku. Tackle! No, no, ball available. Only just. Out from uh, Kulani Nkosi. Here they come. Extra men. A chance for a try. It's going to get the <laughs> Tian Yao, well done. The fact that you are over six foot has certainly helped the cause. <laughs> oh, fantastic try from the Sampala side. It all started off with a good carry from Leon Duplessis, getting through the tackle, offloading in the tackle, keeping the ball alive, keeping forward momentum, unselfish play, letting the ball do the work. And the two metre, 118 kilogram lock forward now stretches over lovely support run from him too and scores a fantastic try the third try for the Sampala outfit this afternoon in the gold cup final how many tries did you score you were a lock forward how many tries did you score in your career sure lost count. count i did lose count <laughs> <laughs> well i guess winning Making one in a final is quite special too. So conversion good from Asuku and uh, the lead stretched to 10 points. Now it's a grand occasion for him. The accountant, Tian Nell. One thing in Paula have been in this first half is ruthless in the right areas of the field. Every time they're in the right area, they make the difference. But that there, the number eight, like you said, is going to be retiring after this game. Leon Duplessis, 
He's a strong ball carrier. He's a big man for a number eight. He's explosive. Gets his hand through the tackle. Offloads. Makes the try. Very deep kick in. Right onto the touchline. Not too much room there for Andre Krobler. No, that's good. That's good possession. That's just been now. The, the, the question is to try and keep it moving if they can. Durbel a little bit at sixes and sevens defensively at the moment. Okay. On a chase, but they've had a chance to regroup. And it's the width of the field used with a tight forwards very much in tow. Yeah, surely comes another try. It's going to be a second one for Mapetti. The flying left winger. That's four tries already in the first half. Oh, it's magic play. It's so good, it's like music to my eyes. This Impala side is firing. One has to say that the Durbel defensive techniques, they're slipping off tackles. Their first time tackles have not been good. The interplay between backs and forwards, support, running line, ball retention, recycling, all going good for Impala at the moment. And all Mapeti basically had to do is trot around and score under the posts. And just over a minute left as Masuku gets the conversion, the additional two points. 17-point game at the moment. And very direct. Ball does the work. Not, not occupying width and space. That pass there, the timing was outstanding. Looked like the prop forward on the, on the wing there. I didn't see his name. But it's all Impala in this first half. Again, Dian Diat going pretty deep into the 22. That's a very good kick there. Very good reply from Nika Krier. Just does wonders for your pack of forwards when you can actually allow them to stride forward around about 30 meters. I'll tell you one thing in the heat, it's the best thing since sliced bread to look up and you back in your opposition's half. Colin Frank with a throw in. And in the background, the hooter. So you could throw the ball or kick it into touch, but they don't want to do that. They want to score more tries. Mumpetti, he's already got two. And eventually, Nico Kriya says, hang on, guys. This is tiring work, this. Let's get off the park. So we have uh, a first half that was full of flourish with four tries to Impala and then one to Durbel. So half time here at the Impala Rugby Club. Impala 27, Durbel 10. Welcome back to Rustenburg Impala Club here in Rustenburg and just a wonderful first half that we've just seen now with some terrific play from the host team. It's going to be Durbel who will start the second half with a kickoff there from Dion Tiart and almost a catch from Vian Gribenau. The left wing, that ball's still in play, is it? We've seen some thunderous tackling today. Energy sapping stuff from both teams. But it's all about the second half now. Can Durbel find a way back into this game? They're 17 points adrift. Well, they've played some great rugby in this match so far. But they've also made some basic elementary errors. 12 tackles that they've missed. 
that really have made them pay. Taken in by the captain, Hanno Stoffbar. Gunter. And a quick pass from on it. Ashley Kyler goes nowhere. So it's counter attack time now for Impala. On. It's lost forward by the Durbel side, and it's unforced errors like those that has put them under immense pressure in that first half, gifting possession back to the Impala side. But that first half, one has to say that the caliber and the quality of rugby has done South African club rugby proud. I think also, you know, with the advent of the early Gold Cup, I remember, I remember one of the issues were the number of knock-ons that existed in matches, you know, and Set. that seems to have improved immeasurably. Liko Kriar. Masuku. And a long pass, but it couldn't go through the hands there of McDonald Duma. He's got it, he's got it, first up. Now he picked it up. And it's turned over. Off your feet. First turnover is good. The man was trying to play the ball off his feet there, says the rift. I'll have a look at that Mbete. He's come all the way downfield. He's involved himself in the play. He plays on the wing. He's a great example. I said it in the first half, two young men who play on the wing. That's outstanding work in a position of strength on the ball. Wins the turnover and penalty for his side. He's a live wire young wing. He looks for work. As we said, Mount Everest to climb for Durbel. The worst thing that Impala can do is start defending a lead. Well, there are lots of tall timber in these in both lineouts. Big competition there too. Yeah. Impala win it. Here's Andre Ulafir. Pick up from the same Andre Ulafir. And good work from Justin Wheeler. All the experience of the flank forward being brought to the fore. Leave red! Look at Kriya, just had a little look up there. Now Masuku is playing for territory. Uh, the kick downfield is a very good one. Kriya now. Always seems to take two or even more players to bring down the hefty left winger of Durbel. Use it! So Tiat, is it going to be a defensive kick as part of their exit strategy? It comes from Raymond Olafir. I think they've got to work really hard now, Vim Du Durbel, to get back into this game. You know, and I think the the next 10 minutes are going to be crucial, especially if that scoreboard changes. And if it changes in their favour, it's going to help them enormously. But if they concede even more points at this stage, that's not going to help their cause. Nico Paper, perfect throw in, fielded there by Tian Nell. The intention is clear from Impala off the top, direct rugby. Slightly mistiming his run. Does Andre Krobla. Obviously wants to get the ball at pace and nice and flat. He was slightly deeper. He would have made the difference. Crouch. Now Durbel, Durbel going to try and run their way out of this defensive position. They need a solid scrum. We've got Ashley Kyler, Warren Brink and Craig Walker in that front row. Crouch. Bind. Set. But Craig Walker's gone off. I think he's uh, been replaced. So let's have a look and see now. Kribeno trying to find his way through. Battering ram stuff. No. 
Well, a little knock on. So, unfortunately for McDonald Duma, he ain't going to get the dry. Okay. I'll do so, Product thanks. of uh, Word Technics of Squall in Bloemfontein. Again, Kubina is a big man for, for a winger. Time off. He's big, he's quick, he's 115 kilograms. <laughs> and they use him often to get over the advantage line. But the man that made that tackle was little Sia Masuka, okay. the fly half. Thanks. Hard and low, puts him on the ground, first time tackle. Yeah, he's down injured as a result of that at the moment. We'll have a look at this, the domination of the scrums. Well, they have been outstanding. Bajeda type Argentine style as that ball comes in. It's a collective effort. It's all about timing, breathing, your bond, nice and tight. Yeah, this is a bit of a worry, this with Masuka. Well, it looks like he's going to get up now. How comfortable is he on that left leg of his? Now the one thing he doesn't want to do is leave the field. He's such a key player in this Nirak Impala team. He has been the whole season, but he's limping quite badly at the moment. Lots, lots of men uh, to take uh, his place, and Justin St. Jerry certainly Sit. is one of the men that would love to have a run here in this final. Well, the desire is still there for Durbanville, and here comes Tribino. Difficult man to bring down. That's a super tackle. And still they come, but back are Dur uh, rather Impala in defense. And that ball just tossed away, so it's a turnover for the men in blue and white. And a penalty to boot. There's a lot of players in the Durbanville side shaking their heads at the moment. Vermin, one sense is that there's a bit of frustration from their side that they're not really able to get strongly back into this game as of yet. Oh, definitely so. Reason being is every time they get into that red zone where they can make a difference, cheap turnovers, gifting possession back to the opposition becomes problematic. But Impala, scrabble defense, Kribunai ball in hand. He is dangerous. They did defend slightly tight on that blind side. All they needed to do, they match numbers, occupy the space. Good two-handed take from Impala once again. I just wonder how much longer Sia Masuka is going to stay on the field. He really is looking uncomfortable. The fly half for Nurek Impala. Now a chance for Geisbert van Wijk. And over the top from Nico Kriya, but it's gone pretty straight up. Two knock-ons, that is. So the first one will belong to Impala. That is the put-in. Both teams just sizing up the opposition at the moment. Desperate to get the first points of the second half. I'm knocked on by Krimino. I have to agree with you, Gavin. It's almost gone back to a shadow boxing period in the game. But Impala obviously want to wind that clock down. Like I said, the worst error they can make is start defending a lead. A moment of brilliance from Durbel can get them back in it. Well, Impala enjoying the possession that they've got up to now. He has better. He'd love to score three tries in the final, wouldn't he? He's got two already. Masuku. Tackle. Seen quite a, a lot of good work as well from Andres Olafir, the loose head prop of Impala. Oh, Masuku dies straight down the middle. What can Raymond Olafir do from here? He's given that a pretty good thump. In fact, that's an outstanding kick from the fullback. Wow. And he gets no thanks from his forwards. <laughs> Typical. A lovely left-footed touch finder, gaining some quality real estate here in Rustenburg. 
That is what you call taking the right club out of the bag. Perfection. Yes, five what? Throw in belonging to Nico Paper. Who's his target this time? It's the self same Andres Olafir that I was talking about. Over the top from Krier. Now, oh, Krivena. That's what we spoke about earlier on, Gavin. Too many unforced errors, handling errors, gifting possession back. To the Impala side, frustrating stuff for Durbel, especially when you're chasing a deficit of 17 points in a final. Bind, set. No, and, and you get to a point where the sands of time start running out. They're not running out at the moment. Good flat take from Van Weyck. Again, Krier. It's a hoist. Up onto the big Gribbenau on the left wing. Somehow they've got to just find the right combination here. And there's quite a lot of kicking from both sides at the moment with those up and unders. Durbel have a man down at the moment. Captain won't be happy with himself. He knows he's a lot better than that. He leads from the front. He's been exceptional for his side this afternoon. It looks like that might be Vian Hribeno. Yeah. The left Let's winger. So the top point scorers then in this year's SSG Gold Cup. Sia Masuka, the man who plays at the moment for Impali is in this game and Raymond Ulafir the fullback of Durbel are the primary scorers and at the bottom there you'll see Cecil Dumont from the Rhinos and of course the Dumont family are well known in mining areas and mining parts and KwaZulu Natal all of them play fly half I think or did and they're the try scorers Jan Momsen he'll be very proud of that but have a look at that Shane Willemsen from Impala six tries He's number eight, Leon Duplessis, six tries. And Justin Wheeler, the captain, five tries. As you said, 17 tries from the loose forwards. That says a lot, doesn't it? Couch. Bind. Sit. And good to see that Vian Kribeno is back on his feet. Nice pick up at the back there by uh, Carl Release. Liebenberg. Just something I was quite looking forward to was the battle between Liebenberg and Duplessis, the two number eights. Liebenberg has had to play a, a fairly defensive role today. But uh, could this be a try? I think it might well be. Nobody stepped into touch, and it's going to be Johan Conradi. Well, the question was, was that a kick or did it come off the knee? Just please make sure that that is a legal kick there, please. And Johan Grief. Yes, please. Johan Grief has awarded the on-field try, but he wants to just make 100% sure that it was a legal kick. Is this the moment of brilliance we are talking about? ABC Rugby, the ball does the work. It's off his knee. It is, yeah. And an attempted kick as well. <laughs> attempted kick off his knee. Stefan, you want to have a decision? Yes, you are. 
The player dropped the ball on his knee and he missed the kick, so it was no legal kick. Okay, so it's a scrum for a knock on. Yes. Thank you. No now, try. I think Andre probably knew it when it happened, uh, although he's shaking his head at the moment. He said, at least I tried to kick it, Illegal even if I missed it. It's rather young, could Roddy, not Andre Krobler. So he had the ball, he fell on his knee, so he had a bit of a scope, so he had a scrum. Well, the decision is 100% right. You know, you can't really question that. Maybe as well that Johan Krenrodi is just a bit annoyed with himself that he didn't score a try there, because they desperately needed it at that point in time. Knock on. Ivan Espach going off the tight head prop for Impala and onto the field uh, comes Boerter, Dirk Boerter that is Fine. Sit. well the scrum of Impala advantage. has stood well today they really have they've got a penalty advantage here and generally speaking They've done the basics quite well, one's got to say, and their set pieces have been good. Oh, definitely so. Their set pieces have been phenomenal. Scrums have been good. Lineouts have been two handed, two, two takes. Two handed takes, apologies. And they have got pack dominance up front, holding the ball and milking the penalty, winding the clock down. Outstanding work. Nico Paper will take some of the kudos for the line-out work with some good throwing in from him too. Van Bijk. Lovely offload. Brilliant there to McDonald Duma. No tackle. Nobody tackle. close in for him to offload to, so they come again. This time Tian Nell. Masuku. He kept it back in field and look at the number of players around the ball carrier. That says a lot too for the perhaps the fitness levels leave as it, much it, as it. anything else. Might be some time for replacements. Well, it has been at a fast pace, it is warm conditions. But Masuku is showing that he's a little general, he's got skill using a wiper kick pass technique outstanding vision from the youngster he's also not that fit at the moment i've got to say i mean he's still limping a little bit is the the fly half and yet he's still able to execute pretty oh, much everything go. so andre engelbrecht onto the park go, guys. replacing andres ulafir at loose head prop he's a longman man engineer supervisor Product from here in Rustenburg, who went to Rustenburg High School. Well, we still don't have any points in the second half. That was the half time score 27 points to 10. We're nearly into 20 minutes of the second half, and no points as of yet. Will they be forthcoming at some point in time? Durbel deep in their own territory. Tackle! Some good work there from Basil Libenberg. And nice little dummy there too from Stefan Potkitter. Well, this is one of the keys I feel them to is this getting possession and keeping it. Durbel can make themselves a real nuisance if they're able to do that. They've got some quality backline players. They've got some really quality loose forwards too. Ashley Kala. This off. I don't know much. Waiting for Dion Tiart. And the, the one of the key things I, I guess too is to try and take out the predictability of your play. Both teams on occasions have found 
space out wide and an overlap. So playing it wide might be part of the answer. Play. Put it uh, rather uh, Conradi, it was. Got it back inside to his fullback. Raymond Ulofi. That ball was ripped out and went backwards, so no problem. Still they can't. Now they in a far better attacking position. Yeah, our Derbell. Tackle! Etienne Schwartz, the man tackled. And the man coming through is Carl Liebenbach. Good support play too. They want to just deliver that ball more quickly from the breakdown point. And it's Janka Gunter. So it's all about defence right now for Impala. Can they make that count? Can they somehow turn the ball over too? And they've done just that. Uh, it's Dirk Boete who half fives his teammates. And that has sort of been the story of the afternoon for this. Dirbel no side in. quick tap penalty. Injury or no injury. <laughs> Sia Masuku, absolutely full of the mix there. Now, this is good refereeing too. Just allowing the advantage if it does accrue. Some really good momentum from Dirbel. Liebenbach. Six leave. Just no, look no, at the no. number of players at the breakdown Gander point. Good. But I think that's a, a key factor too. Durbel are not getting enough players there to contest or to provide support. Uh, I have to agree with you, Gavin. You need immediate support and immediate cleanness to maintain possession and ball retention. And it has been a problem for the Durbel side this afternoon. Also, you don't want to commit too many players because the more players that you burn in a ruck situation, the less players you have to occupy with for your attacking line. I don't know if Musuku, that quick tap penalty, they just defended 12 phases, won the penalty and turnover. Maybe should have just slowed it down, let his big forwards get a breather, knock it into touch, start off with a starter lineup move and take it from there. Well, the replacements now flying onto the field. I see Dumasani Matyashana is also on the field. He's a former South African Sevens player, in fact, a Blitzbok. And congrats to our Blitzbocker today who won the tournament in Singapore by one point against uh, Fiji in the final. 20 points to 19. What a finish. What a finish. And the fact of the matter is they were 19 0 down at half time. Fine. So that is an outstanding comeback Six. against the Fijians. Well, again, it's a, a scrum of decimation. However, Durbel have managed to hold on to it. Leave. Can they find space out wide? Would be the question. Swats. Now, Raymond Ola for you. Well, the defensive work of the Impalas has been excellent during this match. They really have tackled well. He's got As it. a result, they've only given away one try and scored five themselves. And they've turned over enough possession to show that they could be the true champions of club rugby in South Africa in 2019. Masuka's kick beautifully fielded by the left winger Mapete. Well, he has been impressive, the left winger, hasn't he? Despite the two tries that he scored, he's got through a, a huge amount of work. Uh, he's had a fantastic game, has Mapete. Like you said, not only scoring two tries in the first half, but he looks for work. He's always out there. He's won a penalty here and there, turnovers. Possession still in favor of Impala, 60% to the 40 of Durbel. They have had a, lot of, a little bit more possession in the second half, has the Durbel side. But they have been turned over in the red zone quite often, and that's what Impala have done well in the second half. Time on. Ron onto the field. Okay. 
Jy is klaar voor die hakker. Jy is klaar voor die hakker. Jy is klaar voor die hakker. Crouch. Bind. Sit. Hold up. Ball! Well, that's good work again by Impala. They're finishing this game really strongly. Also been a hooker replacement for the Impala side. Nico Paper gets replaced by Malavive Simanga. I don't know if any of you remember, he set the varsity shield alive last year with his Wusu side, Walter Susulu University. He actually won the overall player that rocks in the varsity shield in 2018. Crouch. Bind. Sit. Good will Le Fleur. You'll see him there at scrum half for Durbel. Nico van Wijk still flying his trade as the scrum half for Impala. And he's been a, a real general today as well as the scrum half. Straight over. The player going over the top of the ruck. Straight off your feet. Well, that has been the story of the afternoon for this Durbel side. Penalties conceded. That is number nine. Cheap turnovers, gifting possession back to the Impala side. That has been their second problem. And what it's done for the Impala side, the penalties, is A, got them into the right areas of the field, taking pressure off them. And B, it's just kept that scoreboard ticking over. First opportunity of the second half. And clearly diving over. Andries van Staden. You're not going to get away with that. This young man has been very brave in this game. He's 22 years of age and actually took a real knock on his left leg early in the in the match. And he's stayed on the field. Well, that's going to curl in, I think. So, Masuku. That's like a coffin nail that it really is. 20 points the difference now. So, they've really got to score three converted tries to Durbel to win this final in no time whatsoever. Just 15 minutes or so. But it's been an almighty tussle in the second half with those first points coming after 64 minutes. Good work from Leon Duplessis. He's been an absolute stalwart for Rustenburg Impala. It's a massive kick. Up for it, Ulafir. Very safe hands as uh, Raymond Ulafir. Well, they've been getting enough possession of him, but they haven't been able to really make use of it. Yes, Swats now. Still going. And a pass inside. It's going to be the replacement. Good will the Fleur. Wow. Suddenly, some points in the second half. Well, is this the last throw of the dice for this Durbel side? It takes a moment of brilliance in a final or in any rugby game. And Etienne Swartz sets it a lot. He finds the support of the replacement, Le Fleur. Ghosting through that gap. Stepping well off his leg. There. Maintaining possession, that offload in the tackle makes the try for Le Fleur. But it almost looked like that the Impala side were chasing shadows defensively. That's how good Etienne Swartz was with ball in hand. So the conversion was good and the difference now 13 points. Excellent play and great to see the Durbel come back after conceding that penalty. Now, can they do it again? Ball! 
Did we really got a game in our hands, haven't we? That ball carried in there no need to roll. by Durbo and not released. So Some all collapse. Without that ball being able to come out, it's gone to the Impala boys to put this in. A more was called. Justin Wheeler had his hands on ball and as soon as it went to ground, he didn't have to roll away. And therefore, turnover conceded, so it will be a scrum feed for the Impala side. Time on. So what have the next 14 minutes got in store for us? Bind. Set. Former Ball available. Monument High School boy Nika Kriya there and standing very, very flat was the fly half Masuku. Advantage, knock on. And now they've given the ball away. And Impala got to be very careful here yeah, that they don't concede points. But suddenly it just seems to be a, a Durbel side that's got a spring in their step. Take up there from Brendan Esther Hazen. And that man Schwartz has been looked full of running when he has had the opportunity. players off their feet at the breakdown point and you spoke about penalties against Durbel earlier and they're going to look back at stats them in this match and say you know what what really let us down and we didn't scrum well we gave away a lot of penalties and we missed tackles well, that's the big one penalties discipline on the field missed tackles was a problem and definitely cheap turnovers conceded especially after they've had a good build up maintained possession 12 phases and then they knock the ball on or lose the ball or concede a penalty and that's put them under immense pressure time still off well they're still under pressure because they don't have the throw in at the line out and the line out for impala has functioned time extremely well today time on. with the uh, simanga the former dale boy down from king williamstown with the throw in ball Let's use it once. Here he comes now. Fresh legs on the field. Little pocket rocket, but he's lost the ball. Not going to touch. Okay. Captain. Well, the ball was knocked on into touch, so there is an option. Line out or scrum. Line out. Oh, they're taking the line out. Interesting. Now, their scrums. Uh, have perhaps got weaker as the game has progressed too, so it hasn't really been a strength for them. Yeah, you see uh, a change in tactic in the lineout. It's a long ball, and it's a good ball too from the back of the lineout, opening up a little bit of space. The likes of Carl Diebenberg. Now they're coming at pace. Offside 17. Penalty for offside there. Janka Gunter. The attorney he was uh, very much part of that mix. Offside 17. Tap and go, or they're going to kick for the corner. So Yanka Gunter will try and get that as deep in the 22 as what he can. That's a very decent effort, that. There's a number that stands out like a bad hairstyle. Penalties conceded 10. And Paula have been disciplined only four. Yeah, and that maybe has been a hallmark of their game as well as being their discipline. Now, again, it's those, that big pack of forwards that's got to turn and go backwards for Durbel as uh, Raymond Ulafir kicks a very good up and under. Very contestable. And a chance. Oh, dear. Ball lost. Still they go. And it's called advantage over. That's bouncing field. And now eventually it goes into touch. 
Well, I don't think that Durbel can complain about the opportunities that have presented themselves that they haven't taken. And there's been quite a few of them. Again, good possession of the line out. But attacking from very deep are uh, Durbel. There's uh, Roman release, release! No clear release. Well, they're starting to concede more penalties now, are in Pala. And it's at a stage of the game which, and deep away from their try line, that is less of a problem for them, maybe. Okay, advantage. Van Staden, Van Staden does well, and he's got the offload too, he has a chance now, which way does it bounce? That backwards play on. Well, Conradi's done goal. well, he's made sure that that ball stays in field. It's now or never, they really must get a try now. No, no! Again, it's, it's not a unified effort from uh, Durbel, not enough players right up with that ball so the quick take from Lafleur. now Conradi again advantage and the players are not back really? 10 meters so it's another advantage why not rather just get the try if they can release well, they're very very close standing off his lope shot well, doesn't matter that he's not needed they've got the try well are we in for here uh, in for a big finish Well, it is Dobel chasing a lead. And for once, they have been clinical. They've been ruthless. And this game is now at a knife's edge. Looks like it was Brendan Esterhazen who scored that try, putting his head down, low to the ground, good body position, finding a blade of grass eventually. Well, this is a vital kick, and Olafir has made sure of it. So another converted try could win the game for them, or would win the game potentially if nobody scores against them. Here's the finish. An array of penalties put the Durbel side on the front foot, but a pick and go patience demonstrated. Remember, 20 minutes ago. You still said, Gavin, they need three converted tries to win this game. They and, got look two. At, and look what's happening. They got two of them. Really courageous effort from them, you know. And it looked like the game was just about lost completely. They've got themselves uh, back available, into it. Available. They've got more possession. They're starting to use the possession a little bit more effectively. They're finding width on the field too. Well, Impala this time are the winners of the penalty. And I can tell you now that they would definitely consider kicking at goal with the dead eye dick Sia Masuku. Nah, they're going to keep, keep it down there as best as they can. They've done a good job of keeping Durbel in their half of the field throughout this match. Good presence at that breakdown demonstrated from the Pala side, getting numbers to the, the ruck, forcing the penalty and turnover. Throwing for Simanga. No, absolutely no contest from Durbel. They're all geared to defend blocks. off that line out. Broke loose. No hands, no hands. And Durbel know that any points scored now by Impala will probably seal the game for them. So they've got to defend as best as they can. Oh, 
Just looking to keep it tight for the forwards now. Vantage. Just to carry it in as best as they can. That's one offside. Three of you next to each other. That was racket, yes? well, uh, offside. I would kick a goal, yeah. I mean, I, I don't see any reason why they shouldn't. It's very kickable. Oh, definitely so. And it just puts them out of range. They've got to score twice. But Mark, let's see with only five minutes to go, you've got a kick at goal, you wind a minute down, you get a clear break. It is a final, it's about winning the final. And we are both wrong. <laughs> Gone for the corner. Ah, oh, well, that's the spirit of club rugby in South Africa. And of course, there's yeah, often wisdom behind that too, because being in the opposition 22 means that if they do get the ball, they're going to take a lot of chances, which opens up space for yourself too. So there's no criticism of it. A oh, good two-handed take from Impala once again. They get the drive on around the front of the, the line-out. Can they finish it? Key question. Are there enough troops to carry it over? I think there are. Can the referee see? Nat, he says he needs the support of the TMO Johan Kriev. Johan. My on field decision is a try. I saw the ball on the line. Please just look how he got there, please. Okay, on field try, uh, you are concerned how the ball got into the in goal area. Onto the line, yes, please. Okay. Thanks. Well, the on field decision, it is a try. Mm -hmm. Some good carry. Body position is low. Good support from his fellow teammates, giving that forward momentum. Is there conclusive evidence here of what happened with that ball before it hit the line? Keyword is conclusive. Well, it's definitely not a scenario that he's propelling himself forward with a second Stephen, movement to get right. the trots. Forward uh, the momentum. The ball was grounded on the line the first time, so the player didn't make a double movement. Thank you very much. Try. Anders van Staden, I think, is the man credited. No, in fact, I mean, Dirk Wurte, yeah, who's credited with that try. He being the replacement. And that certainly should seal it with the conversion to come. Well, Gavin, did you have the Rustenberg and Paula faithful when that trial was awarded? It absolutely erupted here. They know they've got this one in the bag. An outstanding try, fantastic try from Dirk Boerte with support from the fellow loose forwards Justin Wheeler and Leon Duplessis, giving him that extra momentum forward push. And considering some of the difficult kicks he's had, he's had a pretty good day with the boot, has Sia Masuka. And it's another two points then. Body position, nice and low. Take a look at the work of Wheeler behind him, giving him that extra forward momentum. Truck and trailer. Magic. Ulafir straight into the sun, but well fielded. 13 points the difference. But can they still finish strongly, these guys from the Western Cape? Leave it! In fact, finishing with a try, I think, will really put the cherry on the top for them. Or well, maybe not quite on the top, but certainly on the second tier. 
The top would be to win it. Swartz. He's got it. Don't have a good. That's brilliant turnover there from Andrew Picotto. Olafu is had a real busy day at fullback, hasn't he? Leave six. Who's going to finish this game with a flourish? Are we going to see a try? Late tackle. Uh, late tackle called by the referee on the, the Durbanville player. So Durbanville will continue to carry. But where are the rest of the players to no, support leave, the leave, ball leave, carrier? Leave seven. There's a lot of tired men out there, I can tell you. He's got it, play and it's it. turned over. Well, this pack of forwards of Impala deserve a lot of credit. They really have worked so well in, and so hard in this game. Now, last chance, yeah, for Raymond Olafir. And once again, the ball comes back to Olafir. And then on to Stefan po uh, rather. Vantage off Stephen your feet, Lima. 20! And a penalty from feet. slap in front. They're not going to kick a goal, that's for certain. Tap and go is the call. Yep. And where's the Vantage support play? In. Comes in the form of the captain, Hanno Stockbart. Well, we called for a try being scored by Durbel to really Leave finish it. off this contest in a lot of style. And they've got it! It's a second try, I think, for Lafleur, the replacement hook uh, scrum half. And that makes it four tries all. In fact, five tries it is for Impala, four to Durbel. And the second half that took so long to ignite has suddenly come to light. Well, continued pressure from the Durbel side. They exit this final with their heads high. They can hold their heads with pride. Lefeu scored the opener of the second half. He scored a brace. All a little bit too late. But it is the Impala side that will be the SSG Gold Cup champions of 2019. And in typical fashion, there will be celebrations. Obviously, the Durbel side very disappointed, but they came out here. Missed tackles was a problem. Ball retention cheap turnovers and then obviously discipline on the field too many penalties but they came back well they held their heads up high but the champions the gold cup champions the ssg gold cup champions impala that is their third title that they've won in this competition this is a world coach side nico larue must be very proud as coach assistant coach nas willafir At the end of the day, it's the Impala that win this game, 37 points to 31, outscoring the opponents, Durbel by five tries to four. final club rugby is healthy in south africa and at the end of the day rugby was a winner impala beating Durbel 37 points to 31 outscoring them five tries to four uh, the pictures tell a story of a thousand words smiles all around that's the big lock forward tian null he scored a try in the first half for the impala side top point scorers in this competition the ssg gold cup Sia Masuko from New Rack Impala, 82 points. Raymond Willefir, Durbel, 74 points. Apiwe Stemele, Swallows, 60 points. Cecil Dumont from the Rhinos, 57 points. Top try scorers, 
Johan Momsen, Naka Bull, seven. The loose forwards were prominent for the Nurek and Parler side, both of them getting six tries. Ashwell Adams, six. Was an outstanding game. This was the opener. Parler came up, guns blazing. He was prominent for his side. Mpete looking for work, scoring a brace of tries. What Impala did well in this build-up is maintaining possession. Cleaners were there, direct, getting over the advantage line. A good carry from Shaney Willemser. And then look at this. Soft hands, silky touches in front of heavy traffic. Fantastic opening try. Impala were good in the first half. They led the first half 27 points to 10. But what they did well is kept the ball alive. The ball did the work. Impete gets his first. Once again, Leon Duplessis, he was fantastic. He led from the front, getting his hands to the tackle, and then a big lock forward, all two meters of him, scoring a fantastic try. Second off, soft hands. Take a look at that from a prop forward. Mapeti gets his brace. All he has to do is trot in and dot under the posts. And it was all action first half. So a two-handed take. And Paula were very good in their physical faces. First phase, scrums and lineouts, extremely clinical and ruthless. And once again, that was the winner, scored by the replacement prop forward, Buerta. Uh, scenes of jubilation for the Paula side. Obviously, Durbel very disappointed, but they made a game of it. The first half turned 27 points to 10. We almost thought that it was going to run away from them, but they managed to score a couple of tries in the second half. Lefleur, Lefleur scored a brace. Esther Hazen scored one. Let's join Gavin Cowley down on the field for festivities. Well, absolutely. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful day this uh, to bring to the conclusion the Gold Cup that has been very, very special and a wonderful final. I think who can argue with up to 70 points and eight or, or nine tries rather that were scored in the game. So we're just getting ourselves organized at the moment and there's a lot of people that will get awards. But first and foremost, I'd like to introduce the presentation party. First of all, Mr. John Smith, who's very well known to all of you, the CEO of the SSG Group. John, welcome to you. Thank you very much for your presence and for your contribution towards club rugby in South Africa. Lindsay Mould, long-standing executive member of South African Rugby. Lindsay, thank you very much for being with us as well. Um, and Dwayne Heath at the back there wasn't part of the introduction, but I have to include him because really, without him, this would never happen. He just does such a remarkable job. To start with then, from an awards perspective, we will offer an award to the SSG Man of the Match, this particular match. And our congratulations go to Itu Mapete, the left wing of Rustenburg Impala. Itu, you, you've got to stick around here because I've got to have a few words with you. You scored two tries today. I mean, after all, that's uh, sort of worthy of discussion. Yeah, it's team tries. I, I give it all to my team, you know what I mean? There's no I in team. <laughs> it's been, it's been a, a good season for you, hasn't it, overall? You guys have played good constructive rugby uh, to get to this point in time? Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, uh, it takes a whole team, you know, a whole collective effort, and these guys are just a bunch of legends. There's nothing more I can say about that. They're just legends. I love these guys so much. Well, you certainly made a, a, a real, real good contribution today. Congratulations. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. It was Mapeti, then the man of the match, the SSG man of the match. We also have an award that goes to the club player of the year. The club player of the year, the two coaches selected four players from either side, and from that we would bring them in. So at this point in time, we'd like to bring in the club player of the year, the number eight for Impala, Leon Duplessis. Next up, our match officials. Stefan Geldenhuis will bring up the refereeing party. And they will each receive a tankard 
from Lindsay Mould and John Smith. And ladies and gentlemen, the losing team today, but they were the losing team, but they certainly gave absolutely everything that they had. It was a fantastic second half performance from the, in the, them in those last 15 minutes or so. So Hannah Stoffmark and Jan Kotzer, if you can come forward with your team to receive your tankards. situation for people who have lost a final and uh, there are still smiles around which is good to see but uh, the credit to these men and many of them there actually just walking past me but some some really good efforts from them right through the course of this year and these are players that have played together for a long time and they've shown over the last five years that they truly are worthy finalists so congratulations once again to the Durbanville Belleville team and commiserations in some ways, but also congratulations on getting to the final and providing such a, a competitive effort. Of course, I'm sure that many of these players will be back next year. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, that many of them too have day jobs. In fact, they all do have day jobs as amateur players. The support staff too of uh, Durbanville Belleville and Johan Kotze. The coach and uh, also all the support staff, congratulations to all of you gentlemen for your efforts during the season. So it's time for the team in blue then. The winners of the SSG Gold Cup 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to ask them to come forward right now with the captain last. And it's Olafir, with he's the, the first man with a tankard, and then followed by the rest of the team. <laughs> Some excellent rugby. And it's not often that a lock scores a try in a final, too. Congratulations, Tianel. And overall, there was some very, very solid rugby played by these gentlemen during the course of the season, not just today in the final, but leading up to this final too. They've played inspiring rugby, and they've been a real credit to the people from Rustenburg. Sia Masuku, the top try scorer during the course of this season for Rustenburg Impala. Mitu Mapeji, who won the Man of the Match award with those two tries that he scored as well. And overall, it was a wonderful team effort, one's got to say, from these gentlemen. <laughs> so big congratulations go to not only the players, but the support staff as well, led by the coach, uh, Nico LaRue. I think there are some very relieved faces amongst many of these gentlemen. But our congratulations go to Nurak Impala for their fantastic effort today. Nika Larue, the coach has just gone past me as well. Good to see you too. Giving back to rugby too. Wonderful as an ex-player. And then the captain, Justin Wheeler. Justin, congratulations, first and foremost, uh, a fantastic effort, and once again winning a final. Uh, took some hard work there in the second half, though. 
Yeah, it was a difficult season. Um, brilliant second half by Der Bell. We had to bring our best. Uh, it was tough out there, but we did it. If you have a look at the overall season, which was only six weeks old, you had to play a lot of rugby in the Gold Cup during the course of that. Uh, do you feel that you guys just improved each game all the way through? I just saw your results without the way that you played and uh, that you reserved that special effort for the final. Yeah, well, we had a mindset to, to gain momentum every week. So from the beginning, we started well, and then from there, we just got momentum going on week for week. Well, today you played some wonderful rugby. I mean, five tries, nobody can argue with that. So congratulations once again, and all of the best. And I'm going to ask John Smith alongside us here, if he can hear me. John Smith, <laughs> he can hear me. John is going to hand over the trophy to you, Justin. And once again, many congratulations. Just thank you to the crowd, uh, to our Heavenly Father for the great momentum. And uh, to our sponsors, Nirag Mining, awesome stuff, thanks. Well, that's what it's all about. It's about the celebration. It's about the silverware. Rugby has been the winner here this afternoon. Club rugby in South Africa is not only healthy, it's a product. John Smith will be handing over the Gold Cup to the captain, Justin Wheeler. And that is what it means to these guys. It's all about the glory. They get their names in the history books. The SSG Gold Cup Champions 2019. That's their third title in four years. And it's a picture that tells a story of a thousand words. These are guys that go to work during the day, 8 to 5, make a sacrifice, go to their club, form a brotherhood. Families make sacrifice. It's unbelievable stuff. You have to love this. I can tell you one thing. It was a fantastic SSG Gold Cup final. Both sides giving it their all. Rustenberg and Parler, who led 27 points to 10 at half time. And then Durbel putting their hand up and making a game of it, almost coming back. But a late try by Buerta, converted by Masuko, who's the top point scorer in the SSG Gold Cup made it a 37 points to 31 victory for this Rustenburg and Parler side look at that smiles all around that's what it means to them and let's join Gavin Carley downstairs with John Smith Thanks very much, guys. Uh, it's a real privilege here to have the CEO of the SSG Group with me, John Smith, better known as the Springbok Rugby Captain and Hooker. But John, a couple of questions for you. First and foremost, I think a great contribution that your company's making to club rugby that, that was very necessary this year too. Yeah, I think it's an incredible um, tournament and I think it's important as well and uh, you know, SSG Holdings was obviously keen to climb in and I think it's important to mention that you know, it was a team effort with Blue Approved and with uh, Money for Jam as well. So you know, it's, 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 a, it's weird for me to be on the other side with the corporates uh, that, that we need um, for the game to be able to produce moments like this for guys who are still aspiring to play the game. My friends in New Zealand always said to me, you know, without club rugby, we're not really going to be where we are. And I think it's pretty much the same in this country. So the key question is around sustainability. You know, do we have an option, an opportunity to create a sustainable model with this Gold Cup? Well, I think it's important that we do find one. And I think uh, certainly from SA Rugby's point of view, they understand the importance of the amateur game, which I think is, is actually going to be playing a, a far bigger role going forward in um, trying to tidy up the professional game. And you know, the, the reality is, is if there's no amateur rugby, then the only time you can make it is at school. And I think that there's, there needs to be a bigger gap for guys to develop and have opportunities to get to a higher level. So what's your message for those schoolboys out there at the moment that maybe are not going to necessarily play at the highest level? Well, I, th I suppose times change and things move on, but I think club rugby and the amateur game is an important one. And I think, uh, you know, I'd like to believe that not everyone who's passionate about the game only wants to play to become a professional, but they play with the aspirations of maybe one day donning the green and gold, but on the way making unbelievable relationships and learning unbelievable lessons of life in the game of rugby. You probably haven't watched a lot of club rugby in recent years because you've been very tied up at a higher level, but how were you, were you impressed with the rugby that you saw? Incredible. I think this is uh, the thing that stands out for me when you watch the games that have been going on in the last six weeks is that these guys have got real jobs. They work the, the full day. They then have to come home and then go and train for two or three hours. They get home at 10.30 at night. You know, I'm not sure how many professionals would be able to pull off what these guys pull off. 
John, thanks so much for chatting to us and uh, thanks for your involvement once again. And I think it's back to the commentary team. Well, what a final doing club rugby proud with those two sides. Rustenburg and Parler versus Durbel. Rugby was the winner. And let me tell you one thing, don't forget, tomorrow it's the rugby that rocks. The Varsity Cup final, Marty's host Tix in Stellenbosch. That is going to be a cracker. Don't miss that for any money. Thank you for joining us and have a lovely afternoon.